It's Bronco versus Forerunner on a Colorado Battle Royale. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Earlier this year, we put our 2021 Toyota 4Runner TRD Off-Road against the new Ford Bronco. Some people complained that we were comparing it against a two-door, and that wasn't fair. So we called the people we knew who had a four-door, and we set up what we're gonna do today. Introducing Tommy. We are out here in Colorado at what they call the Ironclads Trail. This is rated about a six out of 10, but it's gonna put both of these to the test off-road. On this channel, you will see from the perspective of me in the 4Runner. And then over at TFL Off-Road, you'll get Tommy. Yep, and if you want to see it with fewer tripods and more bad jokes, check out TFL Off-Road. <laughs> He's not wrong. Before we head out, let's take a look at the vehicles we have here. And do remember, we have complete in-depth reviews of both the Bronco and the 4Runner here on YouTube. This 4Runner is a 2021 TRD Off-Road Edition that we bought for Driving Sports TV in February of this year. This trim comes standard with Toyota's multi-terrain select and crawl control systems, in addition to a locking rear differential. It's powered by a V6, good for 270 horsepower and 278 pound-feet of torque. It's connected to a five-speed automatic transmission. We have upgraded the all-season radials to Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires wrapped around 17-inch TRD wheels. Prices you see it here, including the tires, 46,105 US dollars, including delivery. The big yellow thing sitting next to it is TFL Cars 2021 Ford Bronco First Edition. This has a 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6 engine, good for 330 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque, connected to a 10-speed automatic transmission. Because it also has the Sasquatch package, it came with both front and rear locking differentials, sway bar disconnect, turn assist, and 35-inch Goodyear Territory mud terrain tires. MSRP on this configuration is $64,695, including destination. That is close to 20 grand more than our 4Runner. Will the difference in price and equipment impact the results? We'll have to hit the trail to find out. I'm letting Tommy take the lead because, of course, he knows this course. He's been on this with so many different vehicles. I've never been here before, so I'm gonna look for him to set the line. And right now I'm just in four high. I haven't changed anything on this vehicle. Um, I'm kind of wondering actually if I want to air down. Maybe we'll do this first one and then we'll worry about airing down. Yeah, this looks like a very technical trail. It's going to be interesting. So Tommy, what are your feelings about airing down for this trail? My feeling though, we probably should have done it back there, but you know what, we'll, we'll pull up to this first obstacle and then we can air down a little bit. I think that's not a bad idea. I just try to go into low range here. <laughs> but since I haven't been here before, I thought a walk of the first set of obstacles was in order. Okay, just took a look at the course and already we're gonna start with something that I think it's actually pretty gnarly. This is gonna be cool. Now we haven't aired down yet. While we're here, I'll set up into low range as well. I'm gonna crank it over there. I am all set, let's do it. These are the ledges leading up to the Razor Rock. This is gonna be super interesting and already, even in 4 <laughs> running out of traction. It's gonna, gonna be time to, I think, lock up a different two here pretty soon. Immediately, I started to lose traction as the wheels lifted. It was time to engage Toyota's A-Track which uses individual wheel braking to push power to the wheels with grip. That made very easy work of the first section. You got a little stuck and the A-Track on and off you went. That was awesome. Oh yeah, it really makes it like butter. Gotta watch my clearances. I don't have as much clearance as uh, Tommy does. Watch my line. I'm gonna let him spot me after I watch him go through this. One of the most exciting features of the new Bronco is the ability to disengage the front sway bar even when it's under stress. This improves articulation, which increases traction on all four corners. Tommy also engaged both front and rear lockers. We also have to give credit to the tires. These mud terrains are massive. 
12 and a half inches wide with a very aggressive tread pattern. But as you can see, even with the Bronco's great articulation, on this obstacle, it's still lifting a tire. So that's the line, huh? I'm kind of wondering how much ground clearance is on that thing? 10 plus inches here. Yeah, I got 9.6, so um, we're going to keep an eye on my uh, soft bits. I'll guide you up. Right, right. so are you all locked up? What are you going to do for this, you think? Well, for right now, I just have A-Track on. I haven't even bothered locking the rear. I just want to kind of see what A-Track can do here. Because if you buy a base SR5 4Runner, you have the same suspension and you have A-Track. So this is what an SR5 would look like on this. Even though A-Track was good earlier, here it's not ideal. It's just too rough. And I'm going to go ahead and put my locker on because I don't like all this shifting. I think that's a, a great idea. <laughs> um, and that line's looking perfect. I'll probably have you turn your wheel a little bit to the driver's side just because there's no reason to crawl up this, this mountainside all that steep. But we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm shimmying. <laughs> You're wrong, indeed. Let's go ahead and reposition that. Yeah, little back bit. up a little. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a slightly different approach at that. I want to be more centered like this. <laughs> you just touched the go car with your tire and turned it off. Yeah, I was done with the shot. That's a pro move. <laughs> Bring the whole vehicle a little bit to your passenger side. Kay. So, yeah. It's going to be back down and we're going to reposition it all together. Okay. Okay. So we don't have to climb up this wall quite as much. Yep, that looks really good. Let's see what happens here. Uh -huh. Perfect. All right, that right front is about to climb. That tree is awfully close. Oh, looking good. All right. Cut the wheel. I, I think now we're beyond the scary part. So cut the wheel to the driver's side. Driver's side? Okay. We're just going to crawl it. Just like this? Perfect. Perfect. I right, stop, stop. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I need to cut more left. We can try. Yeah, let's just give it a try. So what's happening is, since you don't have the front locker, yeah, um, the wheel, the drive, the passenger front has all the traction. It's driving me, yeah. But it's not spinning until you get well on the throttle, and then it keeps scooting you closer. So to at the this point, I just turned on multi-terrain select for uh, rock, okay. which should minimize that. It all should right. actually act as a front locker to a certain degree, if we have enough room in the back to do that. All right, we'll see what happens. Oh, oh, damn it. Let's get through. Oh. I don't like that tree. I don't like that tree. Okay. So just crawl it slowly. Co We're forward or back? Forward. We're going to clear the taillight if you go hard driver. Hard driver. Ah, well, it happens. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so what do we got? Oh, uh, you know, it's not great, but it happens. Brian, dude, I'm so sorry. No, I, it's, it's cool, man. It was my choice. I did it. My line could have been better. I should have backed up instead of just pushing through. But you know what? It's my truck, and I'm okay with it. You say that's actually the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing. Great. Yeah. Well, let's go and see what's this next. not going to be any body damage today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. That was the goal.
it happens. You know, when you're off-roading, sometimes you just get shifted. Now, could I back down and reset? Yeah, should I have probably done that? Sure, but I got more stuff I wanna see, so let's just forget that and keep on going. Okay, now we have the next thing, and I think you call this, I think they call this truth or dare. Would this be the infamous truth or dare? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that rock, we'll just straddle that. I've never seen that rock. As we pulled up, we noticed a huge boulder blocking the route. It was time to put a little elbow grease in. Nature, we are helping nature. Trail improvement. Yep. Make sure to lift with your back in quick twisting movements. <laughs> For more health tips, tune in to TFL, TFL health. Chiropractic. <laughs> I don't know well, where, we ro where we roll rolling yet. Let's go that way. Go that way? Okay, that's good. Okay. Man, what's with your oxygen up here? You have no oxygen here. <sighs> We got this. And then all the way off. Trail I think we should air down before we go. I think that's a good idea. Clearly grip is an issue, so I'm gonna do what I can to improve that by airing the tires down. Currently they're at about 34 PSI. I'm gonna bring them down to 20, which should soften the traversing over the rocks as well as improving my grip. Now you don't need to use a fancy tool like this. This is just for, uh, making it quicker and more accurate. I think we have to do dare. Right, okay. We will do dare. So uh, we're just going to keep crawling up here and see what happens. How did the uh, Kia Telluride do on this? The Kia Telluride, it <laughs> would struggle up here, I think, just a little bit. <laughs> um, but of course, the YouTube commenters will tell us that their Civic can do this. So uh, that, that's where we're at. Okay. This has been so far pretty easy, pretty fun. Now we have another challenge. Hopefully, uh, I don't damage any body panels this time. Oops. Let's see, where's his line? So he's going over there. This is where you can really see just how wide this Bronco is. It barely fits onto this challenge, which really limits Tommy's choice of line. Why is this thing so wide? <laughs> It looks like he could like reach out and touch the rock down there. I think I can do that. Should be easy to do. So I'm just gonna follow his tracks. I still am in four low. I have MTS on, I'm in MTS rock. And uh, the rear diff is locked. Don't wanna damage my wheels if I can avoid it. Should I go more right? Uh, this feels way more precarious than it looks on camera. I'm not going to lift anymore up there. Am I good? Yeah, you're good. Uh, and in case you're curious, yes, I think I can touch that rock. The seatbelt keeps tightening. I can't look. I can't look. And there we go. I have no camera in the front, so I can't see. There's nothing in front of me, is there? No, you're good. I'm so jealous with your front camera. Yeah. And there we go. Easy. Whew, there we go. Got out of that one. So that's one for one. OK, 
Okay, we got one more test that we're going to do here, and that's going to be trail control uh, versus crawl control in Colorado. I'm ready when you are. Man, his suspension looks so much beefier than mine. As it goes over the top. Is his diff going to clear the back? It does easy. Make sure clearance is a concern, so I'm trying to make sure that I don't scrape. And there we go. No scraping. One thing definitely worth mentioning is because we're at more than 10,000 feet here, it isn't just affecting my lungs, it's also affecting the Forerunner. The naturally aspirated V6 could be down to as little as 200 usable horsepower. Since the Bronco is turbocharged, it's able to adjust for the elevation and is still running at its full 330 horses. So on that first obstacle, it was a little problematic. I think you had an advantage with the width, but also the ability to disconnect your sway bar really helped you reach down and get traction. And the front locker, big deal. Right, front locker. I always forget that has a front locker and that is very impressive. Software just can't do as good of a job. So clearly point to Bronco. Uh, on the second one, I think we both did fine. It was no big deal. In fact, I think I had an easier way about it because narrower. I was narrower. Yeah. So, point for runner. Now we have this. What do you think? What, which one do you want to do? Uh, <laughs> so what we have basically is this ledge. And yeah. in places, it's like two, three feet. It, it's pretty meaty. I don't even think that the Forerunner has the angles. It doesn't have the angles. I don't have any extra underbody protection and my control arms hang a little low. A lot of people will add extra body armor on those. I don't have that. Right. So if I hit them, it's gonna be a real long drive back to Seattle. So <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Are you gonna do that? I think I'm going to put the Bronco in all of its off-road goodies and try okay. the, the, the trail control. I wanna see that. See if it'll work. And on this side, it's pretty steep. It's very loose. I mean, we almost fell over just walking up here. It's probably looser than it looks. Uh, and I'm gonna use crawl control on this side. Uh, just to kind of show off how that feature works. You can see trail control trying its best, but just like Toyota's crawl control, it can cause rocking, which is the opposite of what you want to do in the tough stuff. At this point, Tommy abandons sticking to trail control and attempts the climb with manual gas pedal finesse. It's good. It's fine. And he does it. Now to navigate through the tight trees where he can turn around for the reverse approach. You might want to put some rocks there. Abandoning this line, the Bronco retreats to the trees to reset for a different one. Nice, Tommy. Nice. Okay, you're on the ledge. You're dropping. Your exhaust is possibly gonna hit. Oh, you're so, oh, you're good. Tommy did a great job with that Bronco. The Bronco is definitely just a pretty sweet machine. It did, it did great. But the Forerunner here, we just don't have the clearances to make that rock. I know it's just not gonna get it, so I'm gonna do the easier side, but it's a good opportunity to demonstrate how crawl control works. I am going to lock my rear diff. I'm also going to turn on crawl control, and I'm gonna start at the slowest speed, and then I'm going to increase the speed as we go. With crawl control, it sounds awful, but it's doing work here. 
I can increase the speed by moving this knob. And the knobs are placed up high so that I can still keep an eye on my line while I'm making adjustments. It's a pretty smart design. I'm kind of surprised that in the Tundra, they move them down here. So at this point, I'm gonna decrease my speed. Hopefully we'll clear this rock in the middle. I think we'll be fine. Now I'm not putting any throttle on or braking. The Forerunner is doing all of the work. Now I'm a little concerned about these trees. It's very narrow and they are missing a lot of bark as though people have messed this up before. So this is the slowest speed for crawl control. And it really helps me focus. I can put the brake on at any time if I want, but it helps me focus on my line. There we go. And I'm not doing anything. The vehicle is just figuring it out. And it makes things like that super easy. Now I need to turn around. If I had a camera, I could see if there were any obstacles in front of me. There we go. And away we go. Crawl control does the job. Now crawl control both goes up and down. So I'm gonna turn it off for right now. Go back to normal throttle. Crawl control's been deactivated. I'm just gonna turn around here. Just, just dirt. <laughs> Scraping my uh, tail back there on some rocks. You stay there. Yeah, I'm gonna back up. Huh, I thought that was gonna be easier. These rocks are so much slipperier than they appear, and I didn't give myself enough room to account for that. Uh, yeah, I don't like side slopes. Um, yeah, I'll just, back, I'll just back up. So it's time to reset my line and set up for a descent. So I am finding out that these wild peaks in these more extreme conditions, I seem to get a lot more lateral sliding than I would really expect. And that's not, uh, that's not fun. So we're gonna just line up here and go here for the downhill. This should be just fine. I see you, tree. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna put it into crawl control to go down the hill. I just hit the button sets it, I take my foot off the throttle, and now it's using brakes and throttle to manage my descent. Makes it look very easy, and hopefully we get down there without damaging any more body panels, if you know what I mean. Sounds horrible, though. But it really does the job. It's really quite, a, uh, quite an impressive system. And there we go. I'll just let that off, and now I'm just gonna mosey on down. So that is the end of a really fun day. Thank you, Tommy, for having me out. Even though I damaged the Forerunner, that's on me. Um, I do appreciate it. This has actually been a really fun day. Dude, I'm so sorry that happened. I mean, I, I feel terrible about it, um, but this is the best offered attitude I've seen ever. <laughs> Ryan is the real deal out here. We survived, we're okay, and that's what really matters. And then we got to see this section, and I gotta say, that Bronco, it just kills. Pretty good. I mean, it is such a good off-roader. In spite of the width, I mean, we can make fun of it all we want, but the capability is just off the charts. No, you're right. I do have a conclusion though. If you want to go off-road, mm -hmm. don't buy a Bronco, don't buy a Forerunner. Spend three grand on like a clapped Grand Cherokee with every panel dented and then run into trees. You'll have way more fun. Absolutely. Thanks again. <laughs> Appreciate and, it. And uh, maybe we'll do this again up in Washington. Let's do it.